Hi, our names are Allie, Deborah, and Oscar. And we're presenting our lab research project on invasive mussel species in the Puget Sound area. The invasive mussels migrate to places where they compete with a threatened native population due to man-made mistakes. The introduction of exotic species can present serious problems for ecosystems, often displacing native species. In our project, we wanted to determine the spread of invasive species, Mytilis gyroprovincialis, and their potential harm to the native Seattle mussel, Mytilis trussellus. Our hypothesis is that if the mussels are identified as Mytilis gyroprovincialis, then the population of native ones are endangered because an invasive species have already started taking over. First, we collected 24 mussels from a dock in Miller Bay, owned by one of our group members. If you are planning to conduct this experiment, you would need a license to collect samples from bodies of water that are not your property. We recorded the area of collection and the location. For example, were they in a piling and where in the pile you took them from? The date, method of collection, tidal zone, the length, height, and width, and weight of each mussel. Also, we number each sample to ensure the data corresponds with the observations made upon collection. After the experiment, we were able to identify the species. In order to extract DNA from the mussel, you need to have a scalpel or other sharp tool. You can see the mantle labeled in the picture. This is the section of the mussel we cut out. They were approximately three millimeters in length, which provides enough DNA to test. We place this sample into 1.5 milliliter test tubes. Then, we filled the tubes with distilled water. As we placed the mantle in the tubes, we labeled each tube with their sample number and the location. We placed the samples in a refrigerator in the lab we were using until we were ready to test the samples. Next, we will extract the DNA. We transferred 0.5 milliliters of each sample to 24 new tubes while sterilizing the forceps in between transfers. Next, we added 5 microliters of proteinase K and 100 microliters of 1x PZR reaction buffer to each tube. Next, we incubated the tubes in a water bath at 65 degrees Celsius for 90 minutes and then again at 90 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. The supernatant will be at the top of the mixture while the tissue will be on the bottom of the tube. We will then amplify our extracted DNA using polymerase chain reaction. This is the table that shows the ingredients of the master mix. We added the components from the data table below to 24 new, sterile 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tubes, as well as two microliters of supernatant from the tubes containing the extracted muscle DNA for a total volume of 25 microliters in every new tube. The tubes are placed in a thermal cycler to be in PCR. The DNA is heated to 94 degrees Celsius for three minutes. After that, it is heated to 95 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds to denature the DNA. Next, the mixture is cooled to 54 degrees Celsius for 40 seconds to allow the primers to anneal to their complementary sequence. And then the reaction is then heated for one minute at 72 degrees Celsius, the optimal temperature for DNA polymerase to act. These steps are repeated 30 times. We then ran the samples through gel electrophoresis. The gel boxes contain 2.5% TBE agarose gel. We ran six samples in every box for a total of four boxes. All of the boxes had a ladder as well, and box number one was the only box with a control, which was unamplified muscle DNA. There is a difference between the Mytilus trussellus and the Mytilus gyroprovincialis in a gene that codes for a protein used for making the bisal threats. In the non-native species, there is a deletion in the adhesive protein gene resulting in a shorter fragment. The native species yields a fragment that is 168 base pairs long, whereas the non-native species will produce one that is only 126 base pairs long. Our results show that every sample taken from Miller Bay was the DNA of a Mytilus trussellus, the native species, because they yield a fragment that is 168 base pairs long. The images in the previous slide were from our second attempt to amplify the DNA. In the first attempt, none of the samples ran properly in the gel. This could have been due to contamination of the samples in preparation for PCR. For example, we didn't wipe the oil off of the micro pipette tip when transferring the samples, or we didn't put enough master mix into the tubes when we thought we did. 
Our conclusion is that there are no invasive species in Miller Bay, which is a smaller body of water connected to Puget Sound. However, we do not have enough data to determine whether or not invasive species have taken over the entire Puget Sound area, thereby threatening the population of the Seattle native mussels. For further research, we would suggest taking samples from many different areas in Puget Sound which would provide a better understanding of the extent of the potential invasion.